Last week, we were reading in the section on conditions for prayer, and we reached the point of facing the Qibla. So I'm going to start that from the top and then keep going. And to remind you that our talk about the Qibla here is not specifically about North America. These are general rules for facing the Qibla. So that's how we're going to address this. But if anything becomes relevant for us, then we'll mention that inshallah ta'ala. So the author says, قال المصنف رحمه الله said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. واستقبال القبلة facing the Qibla. الشرح, the explanation. وهي الكعبة the Qibla is the Kaaba, that building, that known building. وسميت قبلة لأن المصلي يقابلها this Kaaba was called Qibla because the praying person has muqabala with this building, which means he's across from it and he's facing it. He's opposite to it. So it was called a qibla. So a qibla is something that you face. Our qibla is the Kaaba. وَاسْتِقُبَالُهَا شَرُطُ لِلْسِحَّةِ الصَّلَاةِ and facing this Kaaba, which is the Qibla, is a condition for the validity of the prayer. Fi haqqil qadir. Concerning the one who's able to do so. La fi shiddatil khawf. Not in the case of intense fear. Yani, like red alert from the enemy, for example. Even if it's not an obligatory fight. Even if that fighting were not a personal obligation on you. And it's not a condition in a voluntary prayer while on a journey. In a voluntary prayer while on a journey. And you might say, and you're riding on an animal, right? And it's not a condition. Riding on an animal. That part doesn't have to be there, and it's not here. So there's details. Could be on an animal, could even be while you're walking. So we'll see what we have, inshallah. And what's the evidence for that? لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَوَلِّ وَجِهَكَ شَطُرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطُرَ 144th verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, it means, turn yourself in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, O Muhammad. And wherever you believers were, turn yourselves its direction. So, what Allah commanded be faced in this ayah, what this ayah pronounces that we must face is the shatr. Shatr means jihad, the direction. So not the distance. doesn't say turn yourself towards whatever amounts to the shortest distance between you and Mecca. doesn't say that. doesn't mean that. And it's not the same thing. Shortest distance and direction are not the same thing. Nor does it say something else. It says the shatr, the direction. Direction here means north, east, south, or west. It doesn't mean up, down, right, left, front, or back. Don't mix those. North, east, south, or west. You want to face out of those four directions, one or two of them. One or two of them. What I mean is, Maybe for you, wherever you are on earth, maybe your Qibla is north or south or east or west. That's one direction. Or maybe your direction is northwest or northeast or southeast or southwest, for example. So that's a, a blend of two directions. That's what you want to face in your Qibla. It's not possible, though, to face north-south. That's impossible. 
And it's not possible to face East-West. It's possible to face Southeast, Northeast, Southwest, Northwest, or just North, or just South, or just East, or just West. So that's the shuttle that the ayah commands us to face, the direction. Not front, back, left, right, or up, or down. وَالِسْتِقُبَالُ لَا يَجِبُ فِي غَيْرِ الصَّلَاةِ So, one might say, how do you know that this ayah is for prayer? Because facing the Qibla wouldn't be for something else other than prayer in our religion. We know our religion. So we have prayer, we have fasting, zakah, hajj, we have what else, yani... Uh, slaughtering sacrifices, you have what, getting married, you have what, going to war. So none of these things require facing the Qibla. So of all the things in our religion, the only thing that requires facing this Qibla is the prayer. So by process of elimination, we knew that this is an obligation for the prayer in particular. فَتَعَيَّنَ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ this obligation is particular to the prayer. Anything else that has facing the Qibla in it is going to be a sunnah facing, not obligatory. The prayer facing the Qibla in prayer is obligatory. Facing the Qibla outside of prayer for some other reason like slaughtering sacrifices, that's sunnah, not obligatory. ثُمَّ الْفَرْضُ فِي حَقِّ الْقَرِيبِ مِنَ الْقِبْلَةِ الَّذِي يَرَاهَا يُثَابَةُ عَيْنِهَا Furthermore, the obligation in reference to whoever is close to the Qibla and can see it is for him to accurately face the building of the Kaaba itself. Not the mere direction of it, but the actual building of it. That's two different things. By facing, by being parallel, yani being across from that building with all of one's body. You said you have to face the Qibla to do sujood when you're reciting? Yes, because that's a type of salah. The sujood of recitation and sujood of thanks, those are types of prayer. And the obligation in reference to someone who's far from the Kaaba and thus he cannot see it, is also for him to accurately hit the very body of the Kaaba according to the prominent saying because of this ayah that we have recited. <laughs> However, the difference is that for the one who can't see the Kaaba, it's enough for him to be confident that he's facing the correct direction. Yani, according to right method, of course. Not confident just because you like what you're doing. Not confident just because that's what everybody else around you is doing. Not confident because you dislike people who do different from you. That's not what's going to be valid. Confident based on proper rules. So that's different from the person who can see the Kaaba. It's not enough for him to face a confident direction. It's obligatory on him to face the exact direction that he knows by seeing the Kaaba with his own eyes. He can't rely merely on confidence. فَإِنَّهُ يَلْزَمُهُ ذَلِكَ بِيَقِينَ That one who's close to the Kaaba and he can see it, he's obligated, it's binding on him to face the body of the Kaaba exactly, accurately, by more than mere confidence. Because, لِكُدْرَتِهِ عَلَيْهِ He has to be sure about it because of his ability to be so. بِخِلَافِ الْبَعِيدِ As opposed to the one who's far. So the one who's far, he can't see the Kaaba. So some people, they get caught up with the degree. We who can't see the Kaaba. You would find a person who's stuck. He says, is it, which, is it this degree or that degree? Which degree am I obligated? So it's not by the degree. 
it's going to be by you exerting your most effort to face what you're most confident about. That means, in an easy way, Yani, when I say in an easy way, I mean, I will express to you, inshallah, in an easy way. That means, for example, you say, okay, the sun rises at the Kaaba before it rises where I am. That would make the Kaaba east of me. Okay. And the North Star is higher where I am than it is at the Kaaba. That would make the Kaaba south of me. Okay. Now, according to my looking here, uh, so if I go, if I face east, now I know that's not enough. I can't be confident by merely facing east. Because I know that the North Star is higher where I am than it is at the Kaaba. So just to face east, and I want to be honest with myself, and I want to implement the rules properly of facing what's my most confident direction, then I know I can't stop there. So I'm going to turn a little bit to the south. How much though? Uh, I can't see the Kaaba. What am I going to do? Uh, I have to face what I'm most confident about. So if I turn here towards the south, now this is too much here. I'm not confident here. I'm not confident here. I think I've gone too much south. Let me turn back towards east. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm too close to the east here. I'm not confident. Let me just go back a little bit more towards the south. All right. Here, this south of east that I am arrived at here, I can't be more confident than this. This is the most that I'm able to do. My Lord, oh my Lord, I can't see the Kaaba. I can't be more confident than what I'm facing now, my Lord. This is the prayer direction I ask you to accept from me. I have implemented the knowledge properly and I have faced what I'm most able to be confident about. And then you face the direction where you're most confident based on knowledge, not based on following what everybody else is doing around you. Now, the more knowledge you have about sunrise and North Star and geography, etc., the more knowledge you have, then, then the more you would be able to do something that promotes confidence for yourself. And the more experience you have in finding the Qibla, then the more you're going to be able to face something that promotes confidence for yourself. فَتَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ الْقَادِرَ عَلَى يَقِينِ الْقِبْلَةِ لَا يَجُوزُ لَهُ الْإِجْتِهَادِ So it became clear then that the one who's able to be certain, that means 100% sure with no room of error and not merely confident, it became clear that this one, it's not permissible for him to make a determination, to make an ijtihad for his qibla. Ijtihad meaning to rely on some uh, indications that will, when I deduce from them properly, will lead me to a direction without me being 100% sure that this is exactly the right direction. That's not sufficient for someone who's able to be sure. He can't do that. وَأَمَّا غَيْرُ الْقَادِرِ عَلَى الْيَقِينِ فَإِنْ وَجَدَ مَنْ يُخْبِرُهُ عَنْهَا عَنْ عِلْمٍ As for the one who's unable to be 100% certain, because he can't see the Kaaba, then if he found someone who informs him about the direction and his telling is based on knowledge, not confidence, then that one who can't see will rely on that one who can see. And this one who can't see still does not make a determination when he has someone who can see directing him with the condition that this one who can see is trustworthy. So I think that's all clear. And I also think the difference between certainty and confidence is clear for you. That's a very important difference for you to understand in your religious education. 
you have any questions, feel free, please. Assalamu alaikum. I actually have a question. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes. So, um, in regards to the direction of prayer, I, I would like to know how, because, you know, in this day and age, you know, almost any place, uh, I'm not saying I go to just any mosque, but unfortunately, most of the mosques out here, they pray in the wrong direction. And they always have some kind of argument. And it's hard sometimes to argue with somebody that's stubborn. Um, it's like they already have their minds made. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how how do we show them that their ideology in itself is a contradiction? Mm. Uh, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. I'll give you a, a short answer so that I don't focus this lesson on North America issue. Uh, for one thing, you said an important truth, which is when someone's stubborn, he doesn't want to listen, you can't convince him. So if you find yourself talking to a person who doesn't want to hear what you have to say, then if it were me, I'd stop talking to him. That's one thing. Two, this is an issue that requires some study and might require also some experience. When I say this is an issue, I mean what you're asking me about in particular, which is helping to clarify this issue for someone else. It might require some study on your part, and it might require some experience. Because the people who face the wrong direction they have many fallacies, many, Yani, not a few, a number of them. So you need to know how to address those things. Yani, they'll say something to you, and you'll give an answer. And let's say it's the right answer. They're going to say, ah, but there's this too. So then let's say you give a right answer. But they'll say, well, yeah, I'm not convinced because there's this too. And there's this too. And there's this too. So if you're educated about how to answer all these points, then that's one thing. Or you have experience with talking to people in this issue. So you know how to cut them off from jumping like that. Then you have that too. So, subhanAllah, short answer for you then is, might require some study to sit down and have all their points lined out for you and how to answer them, and might require and or require experience dealing with them so you know how to control the conversation and so that you can anticipate which way will they go and how will they argue with you. Actually, you're absolutely right, but you made a very good point. Um, the people that do have that false ideology have many other false beliefs as well. I actually tend to notice that. So if I see that they pray wrong, I see that they do other things wrong. Like I've recently came into contact with a person that said, oh, you know, if uh, you see the chick, you go out and buy chicken. Well, well, let me stop you there. I'm not talking about other yeah. things like that. I'm talking only yeah. about Qibla. Understood. Only, but only about Qibla. Yeah. Yani, when I say they have other things, I'm not talking about other things outside of Qibla. I'm talking about oh, just okay. Qibla issue. Okay. Just Qibla issue. Okay. okay. When you say, when you answer okay. them, you'll you'll say to them, the right direction is like this. They'll say, ah, but there's this. I'm talking about Qibla. And then you'll say, hey, okay, but the answer for that is this. They'll say, ah, I'm still not convinced because there's this about Qibla though. And then they have so many things that needs a person to be educated about how they talk or have some experience with them, dealing with them. So there's no, there's no direct answer. This has it depends. It needs, it needs right? more direct question. Your question is broad. It needs more direct question. Like to say, what, how do you answer them if they say this? And then you get direct answer. But if your question is broad, like how do you talk to them? That's so broad. Okay, so okay, let me give an example. One of the biggest points that they mentioned to me is if you open, uh, if you look at a map and you go the opposite way, you get to the Kaaba quicker, um, going um, west rather than going east. So they say, oh, since since it's quicker to get there by going west, we're gonna, we're going to pray west. So the answer would be, this is not a religious rule. That's what my answer would be. That's not a religious rule. What do you think you'd say to that? 
Uh, okay, I can definitely say that, but there's no way to break it down. What um, do you think he'd say to that? Care. What do you think he'd say to that? He, uh, if I if he, if I just say that in response, mm. he's probably going to be like, "Well, you're not telling me much." I, I think. Okay, then I'd say I, I'd say, "Do you have any reference that what you're saying is a religious rule?" And what do you think he'd say to that? Okay, okay, just uh, okay. So to ask him basically for a proof. For example, what do you think he'd say to that? Um, he, I think he'd stutter. He, he wouldn't know where to find. Yeah, he wouldn't know. Yeah, they're right there. Then you you right there. Once you get them stuck, then you keep them there. Okay. Okay. Barakallahu. I mean, Wafi. Not it's not the issue. You need to go into all sorts of details with them. If a person said that to me, I'd say to him, "That's not a religious way." And then I'll see what he has to say. How does he answer me? <laughs> And, and the reason I'm going to even choose to answer him like that, because I don't think he has an answer for me in the first place. But I'm going to see what he has to say. So if he said to me, okay, so if he said to me, like you, like you anticipated, uh, that's not saying much. I'd say, I might even say, no, that's actually saying a lot. <laughs> that's not a religious rule. That's not a religious proof. You can't just throw that away and say, oh, I don't like that answer. <laughs> you got to respond to that. Yeah, most definitely. But you see, another thing that I noticed, they could hit you with the answer of um, one of their false scholars saying something, but obviously we know that it's, it's invalid completely. But they might refer to one of their, like a Wahhabi scholar, or or they might even put false... Um, That's easy. Words. So then you say, because you stick to your first point, what's religious proof? Religious proof means an ayah from the Quran, a hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Or it's going to be, at the least, it's going to be the word of a reputable scholar that's not disputable. Not some guy I never heard of from Ezha, or some guy I never heard of from Milwaukee. I don't know where. Okay, understood. So basically we tell them if it doesn't come from one of the main the four main... No, if it's not religious evidence, religious evidence. Religious okay. evidence. Religious evidence. Do you have religious evidence? And then you see what he says. If he says, well, Fulan told me, you say, I'd say, you think that's a religious evidence if Fulan said so? Imam Fulan said so. That's a religious proof? And, I'm gonna, and I want to hear yes or no. I'm not asking the question so that he can not answer it. When, if, do you have religious proof? You say, Imam Fulan said so. And I'd say, so do you think that's a religious proof, Imam Fulan? Well, blah, 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 blah. do you think that's a religious proof? Blah, 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 blah. But do you think that's a religious proof? You, I'm, you're not going to get away from me here. Answer me. Okay. So that's how that's how we get them in the corner. Well, the yeah, absolutely. If you talk to any person about anything, if you ask him a question and allow him to not answer you, you will never get anywhere. Okay, understood. That's that's one good way to put it. I mean, Wafiq. طيب ثم المخبر قد يكون باللفظ وقد يكون دلالة. Furthermore, what informs you about the prayer direction could be someone speaking to you, and it could be an object that indicates a direction. كالمحراب المعتمد. An example of an object that indicates the direction for you is going to be a reliable prayer niche. The محراب. The mihrab that shows the prayer direction. If it's a reliable one, you said they tend to claim to have to find a reference and then never get back to you. Yeah. If he says, I'll get back to you, I'll tell him, in the meantime, stop doing what you're doing because it's wrong. You don't even have a reference. And then get back to me. And I might tell him, I think you'll never get back to me also. But you. So, like a reliable mihrab, a reliable one, like it's an old masjid like 300 years old, for example. The scholars have passed through this masjid over the years, over the, the generations or the decades, several centuries of scholars, verifying this prayer direction. Then you can rely on that mihrab. But if it's not like that, like a building built in recent time, within 100 years or less, or maybe more, then don't rely on that mihrab. And don't rely merely on the way people are standing in their building. This is anywhere. This is the general rule. We're not talking about North America here. This is the rule for Qibla. 
This is Shafi'i school. هذا إذا وجد من يخبره عن علم وهو ممن يعتمد قوله. So this is what one does when who's informing him is informing him by knowledge. He goes by the word of the one who's informing him when that one is trustworthy. أما إذا لم يجد العاجز من يخبره. But if someone who can't see the Kaaba also doesn't have anyone who can tell him the direction by seeing it, yani the one who's telling him can see it, he can't see the Kaaba and he doesn't have someone who sees it and tells him. Then sometimes this one would be able to make a determination to face the Qibla by using the sun and stars and things like that. And sometimes he wouldn't be able to, like so cloudy outside and he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know the land. It's unfamiliar land and it's cloudy and he doesn't have a compass or anything or he's stuck in a basement somewhere. So he's unable to make a determination. فَإِنْ قَدَرَ لَزِيمَهُ لِجْتِهَادِ وَاسْتَقْبَلَ مَا ظَنَّهُ الْقِبْلَةِ so if he's able to make a determination, then he's obligated to make his determination. Ijtihad, I'm calling it. I'm translating Ijtihad here as determination. The determination that leads you to confidence. And then one has to face what he thinks is the Qibla. Based on proper rules, though, not improper rules. Not based on using how airplanes fly. Not based on measuring distance between towns. Not based on your theories about the shape of the earth. And this one who's making an ijtihad, he doesn't face, he doesn't imitate someone else. He does not imitate someone else. Now, here, I'm just going to... Uh, can you please repeat the part? of the mihrab in an old mosque? Yes, Yani. It's not sufficient to rely on an unreliable mihrab in the masjid. What would make it reliable? What would make it reliable is that being an old masjid that the scholars have passed on that for centuries, like 300 years, nobody objecting. Nobody criticizing the prayer direction of that mihrab, then you can rely on it. An example I have is like the mihrab of Al Azhar and the mihrab of Masjid Al Hussein. I don't know where is Masjid Al Hussein. So. The one who's able to make a determination, he's obligated to do so, and then he faces what he thinks, yani what he's confident is the right direction, and he does not mimic another person's prayer direction. Yani, if we just hop down really quick down here, قال في الروضة, and now what we said, ولو اجتهد اثنان وأدى اجتهاد كل كل واحد منهما. ولو اجتهد اثنان وأدى اجتهاد كل واحد منهما إلى جهة had two people made a determination for the Qibla this is a Nawawi and each one came to a different direction by his own determination following proper rules عامل كل منهما باجتهاده each one works according to his own determination وَلَا يَقُتَدِي بِصَاحِبِهِ And neither one would follow his companion. لِأَنَّ كُلَّ مِّنْهُمَا يَعْتَقِدُ خَطَأَ صَاحِبِهِ Because each one of them believes that the other one's mistaken. How would you believe the other one is mistaken? Because by your ijtihad. Didn't you, by that being ijtihad, by definition, then didn't you put forth your greatest effort? So that what you arrived at is what you're confident about and you can't go further. Then that means that if the other one didn't arrive at what you arrived at, then you think he's wrong. So you can't follow him. Kama 
Just like if two people made a determination about two containers, one of those two is filthy and they're trying to determine which one it is. Or two pieces of clothing. One of those two is filthy. They're trying to determine which one it is. And each one came to a different answer. So that means one of them is taking one container and the other's taking the other. Or one of them's taking one clothing and the other's taking the other. They can't follow each other in prayer now because in the case of the containers means each one believes that the other one used filthy water. So you can't follow him or pray with him, pray behind him. Can't pray behind him, Yanni. Can't follow him. Or each one believes that the other one is wearing a contaminated clothing. So he can't follow that one. So likewise is the Qibla issue. When someone comes to a direction different from yours, different from your determination, his determination led him to something different from your determination. You do not follow him and he does not follow you. That's the proper rule. We didn't make it up. So that's from the Rawda of an nawawi Intaha. فَإِنْ فَعَلَ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ إِعَادَةُ الصَّلَاةِ If the person did imitate the other person despite his own determination, the other person came to a different direction than his determination and then he followed him anyway, it would be obligatory on him to make up that prayer because it's not valid. وَإِنْ عَجَزَكَ أَعْمَا عَاجِزِينَ عَنِ الْإِجْتِهَادِ And if he's unable to make a determination for his prayer, like a blind man, then he can imitate someone else. And if a person made a determination and he could not settle upon any particular direction, then he would pray in any direction he wants to. And always remember, I'm reiterating, ijtihad means you went as far as you could go, not just you checked a little bit and then you say, khalas. Like when I talked to someone about the Qibla and they said, they follow Maliki school, and Maliki school said you don't have to consider north and south, you only have to consider east and west. It's a big lie right there too. That's how much the person did not want to put forth their most effort and face the right direction. And the determination for the prayer direction itself is invalid without using the religiously recognized Qibla proofs. Not any proof. The religiously recognized Qibla proofs like the sun and the stars and the landmarks, not the distance, not distance, not shape of the earth. Not how airplanes fly. Those are not Qibla proofs. Think about it like when one of the top imams makes ijtihad. He has to use proof, proper proof, right? Does he use a fabricated hadith to make ijtihad? No. Would he use the Bible to make ijtihad? No. So is he supposed to use a top imam? He's supposed to use the Quran for ijtihad. He's supposed to use... Um, a reliable sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He's supposed to use the consensus. He uses the proper proofs. Not any proof, not anything. Same thing here. The determination you make for the Qibla has to be based on religiously recognized evidence. There are many of them. The weakest of them is the wind because it fluctuates. And the strongest of them is the North Star. That North Star, Al Qutub, the Polaris, you can call it the Polaris, or you can call it the North Star, or you can call it the Polar Star, or the Northern Polar Star. It is a small star in the Little Dipper between Al Farqadain and Al Jadi. Those are some stars that it's between. I don't know how to translate those. 
إذا جعله الواقف خلف أذنيه اليم اليمنى كان مستقبل القبلة إن كان بناحية الكوفة إن كان بناحية الكوفة وبغداد وما والاهما وما والاها وما والاها So if someone were to take this polar star and he put it behind his right ear behind his right ear then he would be facing the Kaaba if he was in Kufa or in Baghdad and whatever is close to there وَيَكُونُ عَلَىٰ عَاتِقِهِ الْأَيْسَرِ بِإِقْلِيمِ مِصْرِ And it would be on his left shoulder in the towns of Egypt. وَيَكُونُ خَلْفَ أُذُنَيْهِ الْيُسْرَى بِدِمَشْقِ And Damascus would be behind his left ear. وَيَضَعُهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ فِي الْيَمَنِ And if a person were in Al-Yemen, in Yemen, then he would put the North Star right between his eyes. وَمَا وَالَاهَا Whatever is close to there. وَأَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ فِي الصِّينِ وَالْيَابَانِ And if someone were in China or in Japan, فَيَسْتَقْبِلُ الْغَرْبِ مَعَ مَيْلٍ قَلِيلٍ إِلَى الْجَنُوبِ Then he would face the West with slight turn towards the South. وَفِي أَمْرِيكَ الشِّمَالِيَةِ الشَّرْقَ مَعَ مَيْلٍ إِلَى الْجَنُوبِ and if one were in North America, then he would face the east with slight turning towards the south. And there's no regard given to the, the people who are ignorant about the Qibla proofs, the religious Qibla proofs, who are there in North America facing northeast. Those people are facing north. Those people are facing while being north of Mecca. North. They are while being north of Mecca facing north. كَمَا يَتَوَجَّهُ أَهْلُ أَمْرِيكَ الْجَنُوبِيَةِ They are facing like the people in South America. وَهَذَا عَجِيبٌ And that's strange. Now, that's a nice picture there for the North Star. Look at that there. You see that picture that the brother put. It has Big Dipper. And then you see that arrow pointing to the Polaris. So the Polaris itself is part of the small dipper or the little dipper. We take a look at this picture here. Now, if you saw other pictures, you'll see how the you'll see how the little dipper looks in comparison to the big dipper. And also, if if you look at different pictures, you'll see different constellations and stars. Uh, and you'll see how that all looks together. And then that would help you if you wanted to go outside and look for the North Star in your own area. I don't know how somebody's doing scribble scratch on my screen like that, but whoever's doing scribble scratch, please don't do scribble scratch. Yes, heck of the, you see the, the picture also the brother here shared. And when you see these pictures here, so you see like the one the brother just shared has Big Dipper up top and Little Dipper down bottom. Don't expect to see it this way, Big Dipper up top, Little Dipper down bottom. When you look, you might see, depends where you are. So you might see Big Dipper on the right, Little Dipper on the left, or Little Dipper on the right, Big Dipper on the left, or Little Dipper on top, Big Dipper on the bottom. Depends on where you are or your perspective. You just need to learn how to identify those stars and those star clusters. And then you'll be able to find your North Star. Now the author, he says, May Allah have mercy on him. It is permissible to leave out facing the Qibla in two cases. But we're going to stop here for tonight. And I'll start from here next week, inshallah ta'ala. But I do want to give you one more tip for the North Star before we go. So, if you find the North Star, then you're going to know what North is. Yeah, and you're going to face the North Star, you're facing North. But if you want to be 
as exact as you can. Maybe, yeah, by your own view of your eye, you're facing the North Star, but are you maybe a little degree off to the right or left in reality or exactly? So what can you do? What you do is you get two rods, two rods that are perfectly straight, for example. You put one in the ground, and then you fix your perspective so that you see the North Star at the tip of that rod. Then take the other rod, plunge it into the ground, but make it lower. Make it lower. And then you fix your perspective so that you see the North Star at the tip of that second rod also. Then what do you do? Draw a line between those two. Then you're going to have direct north. Did you understand that, what I just described to you? Take two rods. One of them is shorter than the other. If you can see the north star on the tip of both of them at the same time, although one of them is shorter than the other, that means you have them lined up perfectly. And then you draw a line between those two, and then you have your perfect north-south line. Is that clear? Let me also give you another tip here. Now, your standard maps, and a map is not a Kipler proof, but your standard map has north at the top of the page and south at the bottom of the page, but there are maps that are reverse of this, and that's not wrong. Now, let's say you found North Star, so you faced north. And then, so since you knew what north was, you knew what south was, but how do you know which one is east and which one is west? So here's something to help you remember. How do you spell we in English? W-E. You spell we, W-E. So, if you want to not be confused, once you find north and south, about west and east, find your north, then you're going to find your south, and then spell the word we. And you put the N on top. Put the N on top. So if the N is on top, so you have W, E, and the N is up top, and the S is down bottom, then you have all your four directions, north, west, south, and east. Also, also, don't rely on your compass without testing it first. Test your compass against the north star, and know that the compass faces what's called magnetic north. Magnetic north, not true north. Compass is pulled by magnetism, they say. So your compass is going to face magnetic north, which is not exactly due north. So what you do is take your compass, compare your compass reading to the actual north star, and take note of how many degrees off your compass needle is. Then you're going to know how, how inaccurate your compass is. But now that you know how inaccurate your compass is, what can you do? Then you can compensate. Now you can use that compass. You've tested it. You saw where's the North Star itself and how, off, how much off is the needle of your compass from that North Star. So you take note of that gap there, and that's how you're going to compensate when you use your compass. Sometimes it's hard to see that North Star in the city because of the artificial lights. Electric lights, I mean. So if you go to the woods or something, or if you live somewhere where there's not too many lights, small town, for example, then it's easier to see those stars. If you don't have any question, then Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Ashhadu an wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah Back to the question what the brother said earlier Yes uh, If you do Because this just happened to me recently Correct somebody about that They 
receptive of what you're telling them about the direction. They said, okay, I'm going to change this and that. You see him two weeks later, even another day, and see him doing the same exact thing. Should you correct them again? That depends on what you believe about the situation. That goes back to the rule of bidding the good and forbidding the evil, which is that when you don't believe that you're bidding the good and forbidding the evil will benefit, you're not obligated to say anything. If you believe that bidding the good and forbidding the evil is going to lead to something worse, you don't say anything. So then you're going to be left, if it's not something worse, then you're left to say something if you think it's going to benefit, or you might not have to say anything if you think it won't benefit. That's a better philosophy. Amin Wafiq. Yes, sir. Yes. I just had a, I had a question about the Maliki direction, about the general direction. Okay. Kind of topic. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. So, so it was said that the Maliki is in North Africa, they, 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 they face um, east, and I was going to say, like, how far, how far north, sorry, uh, how far north can you beat up by that? You can face uh, east if you're uh, west of, you can face east if you're west of the Kaaba. Even if I'm all the way up in, like, northern Canada? But if you're in northern Canada, then you have to face towards the south, too. Yes, correct. Yeah, and you cannot compare someone who's in northern Af in, in northern Canada to someone who's in North Africa. Those are two oh, different yes. places, so that the person in North Africa, let's say, though, let's say that if it's not accurate enough, then it's, then depends. Yeah, it depends maybe on some things. But don't forget that number one, ijtihad means what? Means your greatest effort. You can't stop making ijtihad when you still have more ijtihad to do. You can't say, okay, I, uh, I like this direction. That's fine enough for me. I'll stop here. Can't do that. That's one thing. Number two, the ruling in the Maliki school is, you tell this also in Hanafi school, tell this to anyone who claims Maliki school or Hanafi school. The rule in Maliki school and Hanafi school is that you have to face what you're most confident is the correct direction. Just like in Shafi'i school, it's the same rule in Shafi'i school. You must face what you're most confident is the correct direction. The rule in Shafi'i school, Maliki school, and Hanafi school is if you turn away from what you're most confident is the right direction, then your prayer is invalid even if you wound up facing the right direction actually. So, some brothers and sisters are yani, attributing to Hanafi school and Hanafi school, uh, Maliki school and Hanafi school what's not true about them. They weren't able to do that with Shafi'i school because we follow Shafi'i school and Allah made us strong in Shafi'i school by his help. So they knew they weren't able to claim that for Shafi'i school. So they said, well, we follow Maliki school and we're just going to face East. So we follow Hanafi school and they said you have such and such room for uh, error. And all of that is misapplication because number one, Maliki school and Hanafi school, like Shafi'i school, said you have to face what you're most confident about, which a lot of those people who are not facing Southeast because they're claiming they're facing, they're using Maliki or Hanafi school, a lot of them, they are more confident about Southeast, but they don't want to face that way because they think they have the permission to turn a different way. And then they say, well, I'm following Hanafi school because they give such and such a room for error, for example. Hanafi school is that you have to face what's most confident for you or it's not valid. And that's Maliki school. And that's Shafi'i school. That's number one. Number two, they also said, if you turn away from what you believe is most confident, if you turn away from what you're most confident is correct, your prayer is not valid even if you were facing the right way. That's Maliki school, Hanafi school, and... Shafiri school. So those brothers and sisters, they don't have anything there. And, and that goes back to what I was saying to the brother, the first question. Sometimes you need to be educated because you need to know they have so many things. This is what I'm saying now. This is one of those. 
They have so many things. You would say to them, no, the right direction is like this. Because of this, he would say, ah, oh, but there's this. You say, okay, but the answer for that is this. They'll say, ah, oh, but according to the Hanafi school, there's such a room for error, for example. You say, ah, oh, but no, it's not like that. It's like this. They say, ah, oh, but there's the sun over the Kaaba. Say, no, but that's not even real. They say, no, oh, but you know how the airplanes fly. If you're not supposed to do it that way, yeah, but, you know, we're still going to face the shortest distance. So that's so many things they have. You said, what is the room for error in those schools? Uh, according to the Hanafis, whatever is covered by the contour of your face, whatever is covered by the contour of your face, according to the Hanafis, if you had, let's say, a dot in the back of your head, that dot in the back of your head split through your two eyes and kept going like a triangle. Then what's covered there, that's valid in Hanafi school. But you have to put that with what I'm telling you also, not by itself, not take that by itself and ignore the other stuff so that you don't have to face the right direction. You know what happens sometimes? I found this, I think, is a good example for several cases. You know how... Maybe someone would have, let's say, some family is embarrassed of the, of that family. So he doesn't like, if he had to go out with the family, he wouldn't like to walk with them. Like a, a kid who's like a teenager, he doesn't want to hang with his family because he's embarrassed by them. So he wants to be off to the side doing something else, not really seen with them. Those people are like that, or a lot of people are. Really, they know. Most accurate direction is southeast, but they don't want to be affiliated with some, like, yani, us, yani, just to say how it is. They don't want to be affiliated with us, so they're going to try their best to find a way to justify turning a different way, a way different from what they know is most accurate. They want to find something that justifies for them going against their confidence in the issue. Any last question? And that's how some people are also who they want to be Sunnis. They, they don't want to be Wahhabis. They know Wahhabis are exposed to them. They don't want to be Wahhabis. And the uh, issue of Methabs is clear for them. They know they need to be following Methabs. But they just don't want to be down with AICP, for example. They want something else. Like, they even know AICP, really, those guys are Sunnis. They're not de deviants. But uh, I want to be a Hanafi, though. Even though he can't find anyone who can educate him like he would be able to get educated if he was with, like, attending the lessons in AICP and being educated well because they have strong root in Shafi'i school doesn't want to take that strong source of education for some reason, like to be able to not identify with those people, to not have to say, yeah, I'm with those people or I took from those people. Let's stop here. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.